Hi guys, in this video, two Lunchbox team members are gonna tell you about their experience at the San Antonio Drive-In Rave. Hi guys, my name is Emma Capotis. I am the Director of Community and Culture here at Lunchbox. Welcome to our channel. At Lunchbox, we aim to entertain and educate people in the EDM and music festival community. So if you guys are new here, we would absolutely love it if you would subscribe, give this video a like, and go ahead and comment down below. Today's video is pretty special. You are gonna hear two of our team members talk about their experience at the San Antonio Drive-In Rave. We are gonna be including some clips from the show so you guys can see what it was really like. And Jose and Andrew will be walking you through the entire event. Everything from travel, ticket pricing, entry, health and safety protocols that the event took to comply with social distancing rules, and in general, how the event went itself. So with all that being said, I'm gonna roll right into Andrew and Jose's clips. What's up Lunchbox fam? My name is Andrew. I'm one of the owners and chief revenue officer over at Lunchbox. In terms of planning, it actually ended up being super last minute. I got the opportunity to speak with Migs as well as Sid who put the EDM drive-in event together as well as EDM Maniac who introduced me to them uh, for the event. One of the things that they like to do is bring the concept of EDM uh, and its artists uh, to new cities. So in terms of actually planning everything out, Right away, rounded up the troops, had a couple of buddies from New York as well as Florida. We hopped on a Zoom call and what we were able to do was coordinate our flights so we could all land in Dallas at the same exact time. The reason why we went with Dallas over San Antonio was just due to cost and frequency of flights, so it made it much more affordable. From there, we were then able to get our rental car. We actually ended up upgrading our rental car to a pickup truck reason for this is because EDM Drive-In uh, mentioned that due to the increase in COVID that we were actually going to have to stay in our car unless we had a bed of a truck. So that was a nice little workaround uh, for being in your vehicle. Once we got the car, we drove about four hours to the hotel, which was right downtown in San Antonio, only about 10 minutes from the event, which is something that was really important to us. In terms of what we brought to the event, we ended up going to one of the local grocery stores down in San Antonio. We bought coolers, drinks, water, food, snacks, anything that you'd expect to maybe bring to uh, a day party if you're having a picnic or you're in the park. Obviously, this was much more fun, trust me. You know, just your normal stuff, which was really nice because you can kind of stack up on stuff at a normal price rather than something inflated that you'd normally get at a regular festival. So in terms of actually arriving at the event, they had one of the gates of the Freeman Coliseum, which hosts a ton of live events as well as sports. So they have quite the large parking lot for something like this, but they funneled us into three different lines. And then the event staff went around checking our tickets as well as our parking pass. As you come in, it just wasn't, hey, let's get everyone in their spot, like drive in festival. It was, let's make an experience out of this, okay? So you came in, they had the DJ booth. Shout out to our friend Julian, who ended up locking down a half hour slot to play for people coming in because he submitted such a good set. I mean, let's be real. So that was really cool. Wanted to see my friend uh, DJing as we come in. And then after that, you go to a digital step and repeat where everyone puts their hands outside the car. So you're like, ah, yeah. And they take a picture of that. You're getting free Red Bull, love Red Bull. And all these other glow sticks, disco light that you can plug into the USB inverter in your car, all of this good stuff. Just, just trying to make it more memorable one step at a time. So definitely shout out to the entrance as well uh, to EDM drive-in because that's not something that they had to do. So in terms of overall security though, I would say it was a little bit more on the lenient side when I say a little bit, like absolutely. They didn't check to see what we had in the car. They didn't check our IDs. Uh, so they didn't know if everyone was 21 or if it was 18 and up. I'm not even sure what the guidelines were there with age. I actually don't think there were any because I also saw a dog as well as a little child. So I think anything goes. It is 2020 at this point. Let's just do whatever. However, I will give it to EDM Drive-In that in terms of policies, they were pretty strict in what they had in place, especially compared 
to how Texas felt, at least at the time. I know there was split opinion between social distancing versus not social distancing, mask versus no mask. So as you could imagine, they were definitely on the strict side here to make sure the event could go on. So when you were at your car, it was required to wear your mask. Uh, unless you were taking a sip of a drink or eating. You best believe if you're going to the bathroom with someone and you're crossing paths with tons of cars that you should have your mask on. And if you were also congregating at another vehicle, they were quick to be able to tell how many people are over there versus how many tickets per car there are. Overall, they were pretty, they were pretty strict there and I, I thought that was appropriate. Uh, even with the bathrooms, they were six feet apart. They had dedicated staff specifically just for handing out Purell hand sanitizer. There were soap and water stations. So they were really good about cleanliness uh, and social distancing to honestly the best of their ability. Hey guys, so I'm Jose. I'm the customer service rep at Lunchbox and I had the pleasure of going to the EDM drive-in in San Antonio and boy was it fun. Um, just being able to go to a live event of any kind uh, during this whole madness of a world that we live in today was fantastic. So jumping right into it, just being there at the front gate from the get-go, I was so excited to wait in a line again. Once we got in and we finally got to our spots, it was very interesting looking to your left and your right. There's two spaces away, there's a car, and everyone's, well, socially distant. But it made it almost very interesting when there's an entire audience, an, an entire crowd of people, just a 100,000 of you. You don't really pay attention to the people to the left or right, or at least I don't. Um, because there's so much stimulus going on. But when there's, we had our car with four guys in it, and then to your right, there's one other car, and then like, there's only a couple of cars around you. You're very interested in what's going on to the left and the right and everywhere around you. And so that was really cool. There was actually so much going on because of that. You had the, the camera guy was going from car to car to car to capture that little mini world that's going on, that little mini party in, a, in the truck bed. And I remember one specific time, the camera guy was going right on us, right on our car. And we're having a little uh, little dance party, I guess, right? We're getting into the groove because the, the first DJ starts going. And then he pans over to the, the truck that's two places over from us. And there's this little kid, he must have been like, I don't know, 10 years old at most. He's he's standing on the very top of the truck, the truck doing the floss or whatever that dance is. And so he pans over the kids doing that and then they pan over to us and we're like, uh, okay, did this just turn into a dance dance off? So we literally had a dance off. We started throwing some moves in there and then the cameraman pans over to the little kid and it comes back and forth. And so there's just there's a little level of intimacy there with with so much going on in your little world of a car and a couple of cars around you. So that was super interesting and super different than going to a festival. Aside from that, all the sets were fantastic. Everything that you'd expect, um, Tritonal, Cosmic Gate, Christina Sky, Henry Fong, Catabolic, like there was so many good acts. Um, everything that you'd expect from those guys. It was uh, really cool. The lights, the stage, um, and it wasn't enormous, but it was definitely still cool. Um, enough to get you through, right? My thoughts overall, I definitely recommend it. If there's, if there's a drive-in anywhere near you, <laughs> I flew all the way from New York to Texas to go do it. I absolutely urge you, encourage you to do it. And because of the state of the world that we're in right now, it seems like that's kind of the only thing we have going for us for like a long time. Take advantage if you can. Um, it's absolutely worth it. Just remember to be responsible because it is a drive-in and somebody has to be the designated driver. In terms of what I liked in the experience itself, I mean, I thought it was absolutely awesome. Uh, just right off the bat, want to make that super clear that this was a great experience for me. Uh, just the ability to be around the EDM community again, look around and see how happy people genuinely were. Like people weren't asking for much and they weren't going off the walls. Like it was just such a savory moment to be in front of a stage with lights, lasers, and DJs again. 
I will say the one and only thing I didn't like. So day one, we were probably top 10 first cars there, and we ended up getting the front and center spot of premium just due to the way that people were pulling in. And it was a breathtaking view. I mean, picture front and center stage, 50 feet away, no one around you. I mean, you can't ask for anything better. So day two, what I did, and I kind of forced the group to get there super early, was we got there at like 5.15 and the gates were open at 6.30. We were the second car there. I pull in and this guy runs over to me, says, no, you have to move down. I was like, but I was here first. Uh, he didn't really care. So I was a little bummed out for like the first 10 minutes because I kind of lost the battle. We didn't lose the war though because we did have that amazing spot and experience. I will say that. Uh, what I'd like to see in the future, especially for the higher ticketed areas, is that you can maybe designate the spots because they were doing every two. So instead of worrying about your staff funneling everyone into the appropriate spot, maybe just mark them with cones. Uh, this way it's first come first serve, or you can sell the spots almost like arena style where the front and center are a little bit more expensive than maybe the sides. Yeah, I mean, that was really the only problem I had with the event overall. The only downside I'd have, they did have one Italian ice cart that was going around, but that doubled as um, carting the event people around and they were also the merch cart. It was like a, one of those gators that you drive. If you can serve Italian ice, I'm not sure why they couldn't have maybe done other food somewhere, but that would have been my only thing um, to improve. I, there's probably some safety concerns or something with Corona and, and having that much food out or whatever, or vendors, but if there was a way around that, um, that would be the only thing. I'd love to go get some chicken tenders or something or some pizza. Or, and then beyond that, I don't know, man, I think it, they executed perfectly. Everything was in check, the music, the lights, the, the people, everyone was very respectful. So be mindful of that if you are someone that ends up going to one of these, make sure you follow all the guidelines and all the safety things. Follow everything that the people are telling you to do because this is kind of like the last or only thing that we have for the foreseeable future. Don't ruin it for everyone else, please. But beyond that, yeah, EDM Drive-In San Antonio uh, was a complete success. And if you do have a chance to go to a drive-in yourself, do it. I promise you won't regret it. And maybe we'll see you there. Later, Lunchbox fam. All right, you guys, we hope you have a better understanding now of what drive-in raves are really like. Again, if you're new here, we would absolutely love it if you would subscribe to our channel, click the link down below to join our Facebook group, and of course, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you in our next video. Bye, guys.